This fish weighs over a hundred pounds, and this spear gun costs over a thousand dollars. And that was a really good shot. But the spear gun gets wrapped up on the line, and the fish drags it down into the depths of the ocean. And this is what it sounds like to unexpectedly lose over a thousand dollars in a matter of seconds. That's my buddy's footage, not mine, thank God. Later, he does end up finding his spear gun floating in the water, but his shooting line got cut on some rocks on the ocean floor, and that big fish was lost forever. Probably destined to be eaten by sharks, but we'll never know for sure. When you spear a big fish, one way or another, shit usually goes wrong. And although spearfishing is the most ethical and sustainable way to catch a fish, there is a dark side to it. And that's what this video is about. But in order to tell this story properly, we need to go back in time three days. Real quick, if you saw the last video I posted, thank you for watching, first of all, you might recognize a few of these next clips, but please bear with me for like 30 seconds and I promise it'll tie back into the video later. According to Wikipedia, this fish was somewhere between 15 and 20 years old when I severed its spine with a metal spear. There is a sense of loss when you spear a giant animal like this. But to be honest, that feeling is far outweighed by excitement. It's kind of intoxicating. My catch was the biggest out of everyone's that day, by far. And that afternoon, we brought it to a village and shared with the locals. And I kind of felt like a hero. And the day before that, I also caught the biggest fish of the day. Anyways, my point is, so far, this trip is going pretty great for me. Until today, when this happens. This is my buddy's footage, and once again, that's a great shot. You see that cloud of blood? That's a very good sign. And you see how his first float is barely pulled underwater? That's another good sign. Both of those things mean that the fish is hurt badly. And after a short battle, my buddy lands it. Not quite as big as either of the fish that I got earlier in the week, thank God but still a very good size. And I'm genuinely happy for him. But although I wouldn't admit it at the time, and maybe I'm not even conscious of it, I do not like the fact that I didn't get the biggest catch of the day. I wanted to be the winner. I wanted to be the hero. And so that's what I set out to do. Catch a bigger doggy than my buddy, no matter the cost. Oh. And speaking of cost, you see that hat? That's my new merch, available at aquaticapes.com, which is linked below. And right now, we actually have a special promotion for New Year's. If you buy two hats, you get a third one for full price. Anyways, I want a bigger tuna than my buddy. And I end up finding one, about 80 feet deep. It's a little far, but I'm pretty sure that my gun's got enough range. It does. There's that cloud of blood. I instantly feel relieved because I'm fairly certain that this one's bigger than my buddies. But as I swim back up to the surface, something's not right. My floats aren't moving. They should be soaring down to the bottom. And before I even see the end of my line, I already know that that fish is gone. I should have waited for it to come closer. Just because I had enough range to reach the fish didn't mean that I had enough range to place a good shot into it. And I know better than that, but I wasn't thinking straight. And now all I have to show for it are some scraps of its flesh left on my spear. And that fish probably won't last much longer out there. I quickly reload and continue diving, hoping for a chance to redeem myself. A few minutes later, I see another one and it's coming closer. You see how I adjusted my float line just then? Well, the fish saw it too, and the movement must have made it nervous because now it's changed course and is swimming away from me. That was my mistake and I should let it swim off, but I can't resist taking a Hail Mary. There's that cloud of blood again, but again, my floats aren't moving. In fact, the only thing that's sinking is my heart. Another fish fatally injured. And for what? A photo? Sashimi? I feel horrible. I never should have pulled that trigger, but I was blinded by greed. Both of those fish deserved better. I don't know why, but something about the fact that these fish are so old makes wounding them even more tragic. Meanwhile, my buddy's on his way down to 100 feet, where he sees a really big one significantly bigger than all the others. 
It's still a bit too far though. But I'm not the only one who wants a bigger fish. And I'm not the only one with lots of range on their spear gun. Another long shot and another set of stationary floats. And I don't need to tell you what that means.